Hey guys, I just wanted to give you my review of Arrow, Season 5, Episode 1, called Legacy. So, basically, I'm just going uh, address the positives. One, the first opening action sequence, um, Green Arrow is kicking Anarchy's ass. Terrible villain last season. Dispatches him in like the first couple of minutes, and is trying to disarm a bomb, and he uses a trick arrow that... Um, Felicity provided for him to have him disarm the bomb, but of course they have another vigilante on the scene called Wild Dog. He was trying to disarm it, and Green Arrow has to push him aside, and he incapacitates him with an arrow to the leg just to not only stop him from interfering with this operation, but also from future operations, and tells him, I don't want to see you out here on the streets. If you want to make a donation, if you want to help the city, make a donation to the police department. And Oliver, he ends up showing up late to a gala, which he was supposed to talk about a new anti-crime unit in the police department. But he has the balls to accuse, to address how there are corrupt cops working in the police department now. Um, Thea think thinks it was a little bit ill-advised, and has been questioning why he's he's been letting his responsibility as a mayor fall by the wayside. He's finally decided that um, he's just going to—he's just using the role to get intel on what's going going on in Star City and also in his criminal underworld at the corrupt cop stuff. And when a couple of corrupt cops come to, you know, loot a bad guy's hideout, Tobias Church shows up with brass knuckles, beats um, beats one of the leaders to death. The, and is basically there to start uniting the corrupt cops and all the gang mob bosses to take out the Green Arrow and um, the and also slash Oliver Queen. And he also has this thing where he leaves um, like gold coins on his victims over his victims' eyes. This is a way he's trying to like you know it's a nice little detail to distinguish himself from other mob bosses in Central City. Central Star City, sorry. And Oliver shows up to publicly um, honor the Black Canary. There's gonna they're gonna just reveal a statue that they was made in her honor, even though when it's first revealed it makes it looks like they gave um Laurel Land's butterface. And that's also where Tobias Church and the corrupt cops show up and abduct Oliver Queen as a means of trying to draw out the green arrow with Quentin lands down in the arrow cave, like pointing out the irony of the situation. Who, by the way, he comes back to Star City, but he's basically fallen off the wagon. He's you know drinking and you know lying around the house because he's mourning Laurel's. He's still mourning Laurel's death. Um, Donna dumped him, so it's a good. So thank God we won't be seeing her for a while. Um, but he's. But basically, he's a pep talk from Oliver earlier before the pub, before the public gathering as well. It basic he's basically gets back in the game to help try to find Oliver. Um, he gives the now Quentin gives the a pep talk to put on the speedy costume one last time to help go rescue Oliver. And this is like a nice thing about the flashbacks this season. Now it's going to be taking place in Russia, and you get to see how. Oliver got initiated into the Bratva to kill their leader Kovar um, as a promise that he made to Tiana or Tatiana in the in season four. Um, so he gets to run into Anatoly again from who was last seen at, in season two escaping from Lian Yu. He's a Bratva cat captain. And when Oliver gets tied up because he was in the middle of an underground brawl where she killed the Bratva's best fighter, and they're about to kill him, and totally frees him by breaking his thumbs to get him to help him to basically help him get through the knots, and then it flashes back to when he's been tied up by a corrupt cop and he's beating the shit out of him while he's being held captive. And of course, Oliver presumably gets free the same way, and has like a similar fight scene to like back in the pilot, in which um, 
it ends with him snapping his neck saying no one can know my secret but then Thea witnesses what's going on and after the he they can't free the other politicians that were captured at the time but he, she she's able to get Oliver out but she calls um, Oliver out on you know how he's gone back to killing again and how Laura will not have wanted this and even though Oliver's still like the only active member of Team Arrow aside from Felicity he just feels like you know if he's still stuck with you know killing cr criminals from the, that Laurel will still be alive and then if he killed Damien Dark from when he had the ch chance that she would also be alive and it's the reason why it's a nice role reversal when you know Thea is trying to fight her bloodlust and Oliver is trying to keep her in check now it's flipped and that's the reason why the Thea doesn't want to get back in the field anymore. And it also revealed another flashback that on Laurel's deathbed, the promise that Oliver made was was supposed to make to her was that, you know, if anything happens to her, make sure there's another canary to carry on my legacy. Now, I don't think that should be really taken literally. Only time will tell. Considering we, we've seen any of the Comic-Con footage, it's just basically there's no one taking up a Black Canary, you know, m moniker or costume. I think it was just part of, like, a saying, like, you know, like, have, like, a Canary in the coal, mi coal mine or something. Forget it. I, I, don't, I don't remember how the analogy goes. But basically, she just wants to make sure he has, he has their successors on the team. Um... And at first, and it was kind of relieved because the com if you saw the Comic Con trailer um, for season five, it made it look like oh, like oh, Felicity came up with the idea to put together a new team when they had when right after a shot of Laurel's telling Oliver that he can't keep working alone. He's but they have Felicity say the line, "I'm not the one asking you to put together a new team, or do you forget the promise you made to Laurel?" So. As much as I was like disgusted by the dis direction season three and four went in, and you know, with Stephen Amell and Mark Guggenheim like going on social media and telling fans to fuck off in response to criticism, ironically, they're just as open to the criticism as they are petulant about it. So, and I felt like, you know, there was also another parallel in the flashbacks when Anatoly tells Oliver, "A shark that doesn't swim drowns." He mentions the same thing to Quentin when he's standing looking at Laurel's statue and, you know, about standing still, um, you know, be, you gotta, if you don't move forward, you get stuck or you die, and that's when he realize. and he goes, so he goes back in, um, Quentin, who gets out of his drunken stupor, is able to find, um, a few corrupt, a few non-corrupt cops in the department, to help lead to help lead a team to back him up and rescue the other politicians, but he's not able to get to buy, to buy his church. He escapes. Um, so that was cool to have him, like you know, calling you know, calling the shots and you know, assisting you know, assisting as part of like a pseudo team for Oliver. And they're both shocked by the fact that Quentin and Felicity are shocked by the fact that Oliver decides to stop being stubborn and you know, realize that he's, you know, he's got to recruit Wild Dog and Evelyn Sharp and all these other vigilantes that Felicity has been tracking and who've been out on the streets inspired by Oliver and accept the fact that um, even Diggle gives, even Diggle says that he should go forward with the idea of putting a new team together and accepts the fact that they're probably never going to come, the rest of the guys are never going to come back. And so... And Curtis Holt, who's who goes out scouting for some of the vigilantes, ends up getting mugged. He says that um, he'll identify them to Oliver under one condition, is that he becomes part of the team as well. So, overall, I also got to mention one other thing. Um, Felicity's got a new boyfriend, played by Tyler Ritter, who's also one of the members of the anti-crime unit that's formed at the end of the episode. And one of the non-corrupt cops that Quentin recruited, and 
Also, I gotta say, like, the fight choreography was superb, which you can tell because James Banford, their stunt coordinator, was the director on this episode. I think he also directs the episode next week. And it just says, like, it's definitely like, just top, like, really, like, top notch. And, you know, as opposed to, like, you know, season four, which is kind of like the stunts got a little lackluster, it just feels like. Now, this episode, the stunts were gonna give, um, the stunts you see in Daredevil run for their money. I especially like the the scene where Oliver and crew are trying to escape from the explosion of, of the building, which is like rigged, rigged with bombs. He's able to um, have a grapple arrow to get on Tobias Church's helicopter, but when he gets knocked off the helicopter, he's able to use a trick arrow to parachute to parachute himself to safety and. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with this episode. Um, probably more so than the, the last two season premieres of this show. Like, it just feels like, it very feels like they're trying to live up to the promise of the going back to basics. I hope they continue this trend. It, it makes me want to stay on board. Well, granted, I am going in with some measured, op- with some measured optimism just because of the fact that the first nine episodes of last year started off strong and then it kind of fell off by the end, but hopefully this is a good, this is a sign of things to come that, and this is, I feel ironically more confident about the direction this season, about the direction that this show's going in than The Flash, which is kind of like mixed feelings about if you want to check out my last video. And sadly, the ratings for this episode were down, and I under, which is understandable, but personally... Um, at very least, I would at least, very least, if you haven't seen it, watch this episode, if nothing else, and just see how you feel about it by the end of it. Um, if you have seen it, how do you guys feel about it? Are you guys gonna give Arrow another shot? Do you think it's, do you have hope for it? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.